Hello everyone, this is Elijah with the Roger Guy, and in this video, we're going to be doing a tutorial of the DoorDash driver app. If you haven't signed up for DoorDash yet, you can do so using the link in the description, or you can click the link in the top right hand card right now. The onboarding process for DoorDash will vary depending on what kind of market you are, and you'll get one of these two options. You'll either have orientation online, or you may have one in a physical location in your market. DoorDash will let you know which one of these will be the case as you're signing up, but for the most part, most markets are going off of the online orientation model, although some markets do still use the physical location. As of August 31st, 2020, all Dashers are required to uh, wear a face mask due to the uh, COVID pandemic. So you wanna be aware that this is the case when you start dashing. Once you've logged in, you'll then be taken to the heat map. The heat map shows exactly how busy DoorDash is at the moment. How busy a particular area is depends on the color of that zone. If it's in a modest amount of busyness like in ULIS, then it will have a pinkish red. The more busier a zone is, the redder it will appear on the map. As you can see, there are some areas of the market that are busy and some are very busy. If it gets busy enough, DoorDash may throw out a bonus to incentivize drivers to get on the road. This bonus will be indicated where we see the busy word right now. It will say $1, plus $2, plus $3, etc. That means that on top of whatever you would get paid normally for completing the delivery, you'll get an additional bonus on top of that, which is indicated in that zone. It's important to know that DoorDash is not like Uber and Lyft in the sense of you can go online anytime that you want. Your ability to go online and start receiving deliveries is all predicated upon the amount of busyness that DoorDash has at that time. If your area is gray, meaning that it's not busy, you won't be able to go online at that direct moment. In order to make money with DoorDash, you will first need to sign up for what's known as a dash. A dash is a period of time in which DoorDash will let you go online, receive deliveries, and make money. Dashes tend to go in 30 minute intervals, and it's all predicated upon how much demand is it at that time and how many drivers are on the road. In order to go online and start receiving orders with DoorDash, you'll need to sign up for a dash first. It's important to note that you do have control over your own schedule though. If you happen to be in a zone where it's busy, you can click dash now and it'll take you online to where you can start receiving orders. If you would like to dash in another zone, but you're not currently there, you can also select the zone and click on what's known as dash along the way. After clicking this, you just pick how long you want the dash to be and DoorDash will ask you to confirm a few things such as is your phone charged, do you have enough gas, etc. Once that is done, DoorDash will hold your spot in the zone that you want to dash to for a duration of time. It will let you know how long your spot will be saved, and the app will try its best to try and find you a dash along the way. This means that you may be able to pick up a delivery and take it to someone in that zone while you're on the way there. Going back to the heat map, you can also schedule a dash by clicking on the bars in the top left hand corner and click on schedule. From here, you're able to schedule a dash based on the available time slots. For this example, we're going to sign up for a shift in Grand Prairie from 7.30 to 9.30. Click on Create. And we're officially signed up for the 7.30 to 9.30 dash. If at some point you need to change that dash, you can click on the Change button and it will let you alter the time frames. For instance, if I wanted to go to 9 instead, I could just choose that and I could also alter the start time. Keep in mind that you may not always have the option to extend the end time. That's all dependent upon uh, current demand of dashers and customer orders. I'm going to click on save and the new dash has now been saved. If for some reason you can't go online, you'll want to delete your dash. We can do this by clicking on change and hit delete dash. The dash has successfully been deleted. That covers the dynamics of the heat map. The next thing we'll cover is what you'll see when you're actually online and when you accept the delivery. So we're gonna click on Dash Now and officially go online. The flame icon on the screen is DoorDash's version of a hotspot. This means that if you go to that area, according to DoorDash, you're gonna be more likely to receive deliveries. If you need to pause your dash for any reason, you can click the bars at the top of the screen and click on pause orders. This will cause you to not receive orders and it will officially pause your dash. 
Your dash will then remain paused for up to 35 minutes. If you don't resume your dash by 35 minutes, then the dash will officially end. If you want to end the dash at any point, you can click on end dash right there. If you want to resume the dash, click on resume dash. And then the app will log you back in so you can start receiving orders. When a ping pops up, it will show you the following information. You'll have 30 to 60 seconds to accept. It'll show you the restaurant you're picking up from, the delivery time, the delivery drop-off location, and the amount of miles that the trip is estimated to take. It will also show how much you'll be paid for this delivery, although sometimes on rare occasions, you may actually be paid more than what's displayed. If you want to take the delivery, you can press accept. If you're not interested in taking the delivery, you can just hit the decline button and then give a reason as to why you're declining. Keep in mind that this will affect your acceptance rate. Sometimes you may come across an order that will require you to use your red card. You will know if this is the case before you accept the order, but if you accept the red card order, be aware that you will need it in order to complete the delivery. For the most part though, most orders nowadays are the automatic kind that don't require the red card. Once the order comes in that you want to accept, just hit the accept button and you can move on to the next step. You'll then be taken to this screen where you'll get some information that will help you complete your delivery. You'll obviously see the restaurant that you're heading to and you'll see the exact address. If you scroll down further, you can see the order number which you'll need to give the restaurant once you arrive. Right below that, you'll see the number of items that is in the order. If you click on the arrow, it will display every single individual item inside the order. And finally, at the very bottom, you'll see the name of the person that you'll be picking up for. If you need to contact the person at any point, you can call them using the phone icon or text message them using the message icon. If for some reason you need to cancel the delivery, you can click on the question mark in the top right hand corner and then click on unassign this delivery. Keep in mind that this will impact your completion rating, which we'll cover towards the end of the video. If you want more information on how to cancel an order on DoorDash and the effects of doing so, you want to check this video out. Moving back to the home screen, if you click the bars at the top of the screen, you'll be taken to a place where you have a few more options. You have the option to pause orders after delivery. That means that as soon as this delivery is over, you won't receive any more deliveries and your dash will be paused. You have the option to extend this dash if you want, although keep in mind the option to extend dash may not always be available, and you have the option to have the app read instructions upon arrival. This means that if the customer has left any notes for you to follow, the app will automatically start reading them for you out loud. Once you get the delivery, you want to hit the directions button and it will pull up your default GPS setting to take you and navigate you to the restaurant. There's a chance that you may get another delivery on your way to pick up this delivery. If you do, you have the option to accept or decline it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and accept it. Since I've accepted the order, I'll now have two orders to pick up from the first watch restaurant. Once you arrive, you want to click on arrive at store. This will let the restaurant staff know that you've arrived at the store. Then you want to go inside and let the staff know you're here to pick up an order for DoorDash and give them the name and or the order number. Once you picked up the order or orders, you want to take the food back to the car and begin the next phase of the delivery. If the order is not ready once you get there, you can click on waiting for your order. DoorDash will then ask you why you're waiting and then you can select an option. This is part of a feedback setup that DoorDash has so the restaurants can improve their performance. Once you're back in your car, click on confirm pickup and then you can start navigating towards the customer drop off location. Once on this screen, you'll be shown the customer drop off location and the drop off instructions. Here you will encounter one of three scenarios. You'll have the wait in the car scenario, the handed customer scenario, and the leave at door scenario. For the first two scenarios, those being handed to the customer or stay in the car, you'll be presented with the following screen. If it says wait in car, then the customer should come out to you once you've arrived at a drop off location. If it says handed to customer, you'll need to exit the vehicle and deliver the food to the customer's house or unit. If for some reason the customer isn't answering the door, you can give them a call or shoot them a text message letting you know that you've arrived. If you still can't get a hold of them, then you can select the option can't hand order to customer. Once you click on this, you'll be instructed to wait five to eight minutes to give the customer a chance to come get their food. 
If they still haven't gotten their food once the timer runs out, you'll then be instructed to leave the food in a safe place and to take a picture of it as evidence. Once you've completed the delivery, you'll then be asked to rate your experience with the drop-off. You can give them a smiley face if you had a good experience and select Y, or if you had a poor experience, you can give them a frown face and select Y. The last scenario that you may encounter is the leave at the door option. This is the option where you just leave the food on the front porch or in front of their door and they'll come and get the food once you complete the delivery. If you have this type of drop off, all you need to do is click on complete delivery steps once you've arrived and take a picture of the food left at the doorstep. Once this is done, all you need to do is confirm it and then the delivery is officially finished. That concludes the tutorial on how to complete a delivery. We'll now give the tutorial on the overall DoorDash app. You can check on what new promotions are going on by DoorDash by clicking on new promotions. This will let you know exactly what zones have bonuses and what times the bonuses are enacted. If you click on the bars in the top left hand corner, you can check on your earnings by clicking the earnings tab. From here, you can see your metrics in regards to DoorDash as well as your earnings. If you click on the bank at the top of the screen, this will give you the option to use Instant Pay. In addition to Instant Pay, you can also add a bank account here or change a bank account if you want to use a different bank than you're already using. You can also sign up for the Dasher Direct card if you have an interest in that. For more information on what is Dasher Direct, you can check this video out. Instant or Fast Pay is when you have the option to deposit your earnings on a debit card of your choice for a fee. In this case, the fee is $1.99 and you can use it once a day. If you have not set up Instant or Fast Pay, you'll have the option to do so here. Keep in mind that you'll need to complete at least 25 DoorDash deliveries before the option to use Fast Pay will be unlocked. And once you unlock the Fast Pay, once you add the debit card, it will take DoorDash seven days to confirm that debit card. So you'll wanna add a debit card as soon as possible if you want to use the FastPay option. When you're ready to use FastPay, just click on Deposits and Transfers and click on Cash Out with FastPay. It'll let you know the fee and how long it'll take to reach your bank. It says the funds will be available in 30 minutes to one day, but in my experience, it usually takes maybe about a minute or two. You can check on your ratings by clicking the Ratings tab. You'll see various types of ratings when you click on Ratings, but according to DoorDash, the only ones that really matter in the grand scheme of things is the average customer rating and the completion rate. The completion rate should stay above 80%, otherwise you're at risk of getting deactivated, and the customer rating shouldn't drop below 4.2, otherwise you'll be at risk of being deactivated. Continuing down the bar menu, you can check on your account details by clicking on account details. From here, you can change any key information that you feel needs to be changed. And if you need to mark your red card that you received when you signed up for DoorDash as lost, you can do so here and have a new one ordered. If you click on the settings tab, you'll have the option to change your default navigation here, as well as change the mode of the app. For the duration of this tutorial, we've been in light mode, but the app does have a dark mode, which makes it easier on the eyes when driving at night. And finally, if you need to manage your account in any form or fashion, just click on manage account. If for some reason you need to log out, you can click on log out and you'll be logged out of the DoorDash app. And that does it for the DoorDash driver tutorial. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you need additional help, visit the website on the screen right now, or you can click on it in the link in the description. If you found value in this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. It's very much appreciated. And consider subscribing if you're new to hear more about DoorDash content that we drop. This is Elijah with the Rideshare Guy, signing off. Be safe and proper, everyone.